I got to ask about this big, bold decision at the very beginning to not do advertisements on the website and uh, just in general, the philosophy of the business model, Wikipedia, what, what yeah. went behind that? Yeah. So um, I think most people know this, but we're a charity. So in the U.S., uh, you know, registered as a charity. And uh, we don't have any ads on the site. And the vast majority of the money is from donations. But the vast majority from small donors. So people giving 25 bucks or whatever. If you're listening to this, go donate. <laughs> go donate. Donate now. Five bucks. Ahead. I've donated so many times. And we have, you know, millions of donors every year, but it's like a small percentage of people. I would say in the early days, a big part of it was aesthetic almost mm -hmm. as much as anything else. It was just like, mm, I just think, I don't really want ads on Wikipedia. Like, I just think it would be, there's a lot of reasons why it might not be good. And even back then, um, I didn't think as much as I have since about a business model can tend to drive you in a certain place. Mm -hmm. And really thinking that through in advance is really important because you might say, yeah, we're really, really keen on community control and neutrality. But if we had an advertising-based business model, probably that would begin to erode. Even if I believe in it very strongly, organizations tend to follow the money in the DNA in the long run. And so things like, I mean, it's easy to think about some of the immediate problems. So like if you go uh, to read about, um, I don't know, um, uh, Nissan car company, and if you saw an ad for the new Nissan at the top of the page, you might be like, did they pay for this? Or you know, like, mm -hmm. that, like, do the advertisers have influence over the content? Because you kind of wonder about that for all kinds of media. And that undermines trust. Undermines trust, right? But also things like, you know, we don't have clickbait headlines in Wikipedia. You've never seen, you know, Wikipedia entries with all this kind of uh, listicles, you know, sort of the 10... 10 funniest cat pictures, number seven will make you cry, you know, yeah. none of that kind of stuff because there's no incentive, no reason to do that. Also, you know, there's no reason to have an algorithm to say, actually, we're going to use our algorithm to drive you to stay on the website longer. We're going to use the algorithm to drive you to, you know, it's like, oh, uh, you're reading about Queen Victoria. There's nothing to sell you when you're reading about Queen Victoria. Let's move you on to Las Vegas because actually the ad revenue around hotels in Las Vegas is quite good. So we don't have that sort of, there's no incentive for the organization to go, oh, let's let's move people around to things that have better ad revenue. Instead, it's just like, oh, well, what's most interesting to the community just to, to make those links. So that um, decision uh, just seemed obvious to me. But as I say, it was less of a business decision and more of an aesthetic. It's like, oh, like this is how I, I like Wikipedia. It doesn't have ads. don't really want, you know, in these early days, like a lot of the ads, that, that was well before the era of really quality ad targeting and all that. So you got a lot of banners, banners, punch the monkey ads and all that kind of nonsense. And so, you know, but there was no guarantee it was no, it was not really clear how could we fund this, you know? Like, it was pretty cheap. It still is quite cheap compared to, you know, most, uh, you know, we don't have 100,000 employees and all of that. But would we be able to raise money through donations? And so I remember the the first time that we did, like, really did a, a, a donation campaign was on a Christmas day. Uh, in 2003, I think it was, there was, uh, we had three servers, database servers and two front-end servers, and they were all the same size or whatever. And two of them crashed. They broke. Like, I don't even know, remember now, like the hard drive. It was like, it was Christmas Day. So I scrambled on Christmas Day to sort of go onto the database server, which fortunately survived, and have it become a front-end server as well. And then the site was really slow, and it wasn't working very well. And I was like, okay, it's time. We, we need to do a fundraiser. And so I was hoping to raise um, $20,000 in a month's time, but we raised nearly 30000 within two, three weeks' time. So that was the first proof point of like, oh, like we put a banner up and people will donate. Like we just explain we need the money and people are like already, we were very small back then and people were like, oh yeah, like I love this, I want to contribute. Then over the years, we've 
become more sophisticated about the fundraising campaigns, and we've tested a lot of different messaging and so forth. What we used to think, um, you know, I remember one year we really went went heavy with, we have a great ambitions to, you know, uh, the, the, the idea of Wikipedia is a free encyclopedia for every single person on the planet. So what about the languages of sub-Saharan Africa? So I thought, okay, we're trying to raise money. We need to talk about that because it's really important and near and dear to my heart. And just instinctively, knowing nothing about charity fundraising, you see it all around. It's like, oh, charities always mention like the poor people they're helping. So let's talk about that. Didn't really work as well. The the pitch that, I, like this is very vague and very sort of broad, but the pitch that works better than any other in general is uh, a fairness pitch of like, you use it all the time you should probably chip in. And most people are like, yeah, you know what? My life would suck without Wikipedia. I use it constantly and whatever, I should chip in. Like, it just seems like the right thing to do. And that, and there's many variants on that, obviously. Um, and that's really, it works. And like, people are like, oh yeah, like Wikipedia, I love Wikipedia and, and you know, I shouldn't. And so sometimes people say, um, you know, ah, oh, why are you always begging for money on the website? And, you know, I say, it's not that often, it's not that much, but it does happen. Uh, they're like, why don't you just get Google and uh, Facebook and Microsoft, why don't they pay for it? And I'm like, mm, I don't think that's really the right answer. Influence it, starts to creep in. Influence starts to creep in and questions start to creep in. Like the best funding for Wikipedia is the small donors. We also have major donors, right? We have high net worth people who donate, uh, but we always are very careful about that sort of thing to say, wow, that's really great and really important, but we can't let that become influence uh, because that would just be really quite, quite, yeah, not good for Wikipedia. I would love to know how many times I've visited Wikipedia, how much time I've spent on it, mm. because I have a general sense that it's the most useful site I've ever yeah. used, competing maybe with Google Search, yeah, which I've ultimately lands on Wikipedia. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah right. But yeah. I, if I were yeah. just reminded of like, uh -huh. hey, remember all those times your life was made better because <laughs> of the site? Yeah. I think I would be much more like, yeah, why did I waste money on site X, Y, Z, when I could be like, I should be yeah. giving a lot of, yeah. uh, here. Well, um, you know, the Guardian newspaper has a similar model, which is they have ads, but they also, there's no paywall, but they just encourage people to donate. Um, and they do that. Like I've sometimes seen a banner saying, um, oh, this is your 134th article you've read this year. Would you like to donate? And I think that's, I, I think it's effective. Works. I mean, they're testing. Uh, but also I wonder, just for some people, if they just don't feel like guilty and then think, well, I shouldn't bother them so much. I don't know. But it's a good question. I don't know the answer. I guess that's the thing I could also turn on because that would make me happy. I feel like legitimately there's some sites, and this speaks to our social media discussion, Wikipedia unquestionably makes me feel better about myself mm. if I spend time on it. Like there's some websites where I'm like, if I spend time on Twitter, sometimes I'm like, I regret there's, uh, I think Elon talks about this, minimize the number of regretted minutes. Yeah. My yeah. number of regretted minutes on Wikipedia is like zero. Like I, <laughs> I don't remember a time, uh, I've just discovered this, uh, uh, I started following on Instagram a page, Depth of Wikipedia. <laughs> oh yeah. There's like crazy yeah. Wikipedia page. Uh, Th yeah. There's no yeah. Wikipedia page. That yeah, I gave her like a uh, uh, Media Contributor of the Year award this year because she's so great. <laughs> yeah, she's amazing. Depth of Wikipedia is so fun. Uh, so I, yeah, so that's 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 the kind of interesting point that I, um, I don't even know if there's a competitor there. Maybe the sort of programming Stack Overflow type of websites, but everything else, there's a, always a trade off. There's a, it's probably because of the ad driven model because it, there's an incentive to pull you into clickbait. Yeah, and Wikipedia has no clickbait. Yeah. it's all about the quality of the knowledge and the wisdom and so yeah. on. No, that's right. And I, I also like Stack Overflow. Although I wonder, I wonder what you think of this. I've I so I only program for fun as a hobby and I don't have enough time to do it but I do and I'm not very good at it so therefore I end up on stack overflow quite a lot trying to figure out what's gone wrong and I have really transitioned to using uh chat gpt yeah much more for that because I can often find the answer clearly explained 
And it just, it works better than sifting through threads. And I kind of feel bad about that because I do love Stack Overflow and their community. I mean, I'm assuming, I haven't read anything about in the news about it. I'm assuming they are keenly aware of this and they're thinking about how can we sort of use this chunk of knowledge that we've got here and provide a new type of interface where you can query it with a question and actually get uh, an answer that's based on the answers that we've had. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, and I think uh, Stack Overflow currently uh, has policies against using GPT. Like there's a contentious kind of tension. Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're trying to still figure well, that and, out. I, I, and so we we are similar in that regard. Like obviously all the things we've talked about, like ChatGPT makes stuff up and it makes up references. So our community has already put into place some policies about it. But roughly speaking, there's always more nuance, but roughly speaking, it's sort of like you, the human, are responsible for what you put into Wikipedia. So if you use ChatGPT, you you better check it. Because there's a lot of great use cases of, you know, like, oh, well, I'm, I'm not a native speaker of German, but I kind of am pretty good. I'm not talking about myself, a hypothetical me that's pretty good. And I kind of just want to run my edit through ChatGPT in German to go make sure my grammar's okay. That's actually cool. 